I have Olympic insomnia. Some nights sleep is just a different planet. When you tell people that you've got insomnia, they'll always say the same thing. Oh, really? Because I'm always out as soon as my head hits the pillow. <laughs> right, thanks. What I normally do then is demonstrate to them how they're also always out as soon as their head hits my fist. <laughs> Someone comes up to you and tells you, like, that they're blind, right? You don't say, oh, really? Because I can see perfectly. <laughs> Blimey, is that the Pyrenees? <laughs> Someone comes up to you and tells you that they've just been paralysed from the waist down. You don't say, oh, really? Well, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God! There's another human being in distress. I've got to get down there and help. Oh, God! A fellow human being needs my help. I've got to go down there, and even if there's a, a gang of men with guns and knives, I don't care. I've just got to rush down there and see if I can save that poor man's life. Oh, God! What are they doing to him? Oh, that just sounds awful. Oh, God, I've got to get down there. Faster, faster! <laughs> I've got a moment to lose. Oh, God! Cufflinks, cufflinks. <laughs> oh, I've just got to live on my live out those. Get down there. Um, oh, I'm sure there's a WCW wrestler like Hulk Hogan or The Undertaker or Bruce Lee. I've got to get down there and... Oh, it's a cat! <laughs> oh, God, there's been a moment to lose. Hurry, hurry, I'll just quickly throw on a pair of slip-ons. Down there, Miss. Please help me kick more and be better at sort of fighting generally. <laughs> ah, it seems to be quieting down a bit. The great thing about sleepless nights like this is they do grant my brain some terrific insights, you know. Like, I've just worked out who they should send to Bosnia to sort out the Serbs and the Croats. Tony. The bloke who stands by the dartboard in bullseye. Because <laughs> he's such a calming presence, isn't he? He'd go there and say, all right, lads, take it easy, take it easy, not to worry. And that'd sort it. And when I realise I'm thinking these things, I just lose all sense of self, you know? I don't know who I am. Which is bad enough normally because of my name. People just keep on mispronouncing it, you know? Calling me Mr Badeal, Mr Biddle, Mr Tosspot. <laughs> it's amazing how wrong it can get, you know? Minicabs arrive at my door going, taxi for Mr Bloody Blub! <laughs> And as the night wears on and I begin to doubt everything, that's when I remember, you know, she loves me. This is a really good relationship, you know. We have a great time sexually. Um, a lot of other people think my car's shit, but she doesn't. And, uh, you know, the Nissan Micra was car of the year, 1982. <laughs> I've got Emma. I can't sleep, but, you know, I prefer to have Emma and not sleep than be someone who can sleep but who doesn't have anything like her. Like Rob. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, I had this really weird dream. Oh, God, what was it? Oh, yeah. I was trapped in a cave with this cockroach. A horrible, great, big, stinking, festering cockroach with little round glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and it had horrible bad breath. It was breathing all over me and I felt really sick. Ooh. I was hungry, and it said, it's all right, have some of my cucumber. <laughs> and it held it out to me, and it was this tiny, wee <laughs> little cucumber. <laughs> and he said, this is my cocktail gherkin. <laughs> and I said, that's not going to fill me up. <laughs> right. What a weird dream. What do you think it means? Well, the cave suggests womanhood, and you're trapped in it, suggesting, you know, leans towards lesbianism. And, <laughs> you know, I have said that if you ever wanted to bring another woman into our bed, <laughs> that's OK with me. So, basically, this cockroach is a projection of your self-loathing, your fears about whether or not you smell, whether you're ugly and so on. So, essentially, this cockroach is you. So I wonder, is there anything else you can tell me about this cockroach? Um, it was covered in white spots. <laughs> I don't know what happened now. I wasn't hungry after all, because the day before, 
a friend of the cockroach, an ape with long hair, <laughs> had given me a huge marrow. <laughs> Not like a small gherkin. No, 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 a huge marrow. God, it's so strange, isn't it? Weird. I've got no idea what it all means. Uh, this cockroach, did he, did he have any means of travelling about? Some sort of a trolley or stagecoach or chariot? And I wonder if you can remember what you felt about that. No, no, he didn't have any of those, no. But I do remember his car was shit. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great relationship. Um, I think if there's a problem, it's with me, because I always find it really difficult in relationships to say, I love you. It's not that I don't feel it, it's just the words. They feel so weighted down with cliché and commitment. So what I normally do is just fudge the issue by looking deep into someone's eyes and saying, I shlub you. <laughs> I really love, love, love you. Which means that, so far, my most successful relationship has been with one of the clangers. <laughs> Why can't I sleep? People say to me, David, all you need is someone reassuring to talk to you as you go to sleep. So I've got Tony from Bullseye to come and stand by my bedside <laughs> going... Just take your time, Dave. <laughs> nice and easy. It's all right. Just relax. We want you to sleep. Then morning comes, I can get up, but it doesn't end there, because then I just spend the whole of the day worrying about which particular bad time of the day ahead I'm going to suddenly fall asleep. Right, I'm not <laughs> falling downstairs. It's dangerous. You'll have to get me a stunt double. Yeah, it's all, it's all right, we've got you on. We've got your stunt double. Right. Albert, you're on now. Albert. should help to pay for your dialysis machine. <laughs> Phew. Better watch out for those falling asleep suddenly, shenanigans in future. <laughs> so now I'm just exhausted all the next day. I can't understand the levels of sleep that some people can achieve, you know, like sleepwalkers. To be that asleep that you mustn't be woken, or so they say. So, David, Emma tells me you've bought a Nissan Micra. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I think she's very <laughs> fond of the car, really. Oh, hello, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Shh! Mustn't wake him. Mustn't wake him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> in here. <laughs> Is it the financial time? <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is no need for 40% of all motoring accidents to happen. Self-approaching at a moderate 15 miles an hour along the highway or main carefree concourse area. To my left, a Ford Fiesta gives way to T-junction very sensibly. <laughs> you 
see, there was no need for that to happen. <laughs> Welcome to MTV's Unplugged, a show in which some of the world's top bands perform acoustic sets entirely unaccompanied by any electronic instruments. Tonight on MTV Unplugged, would you please welcome The Orb. pathetic in London and it gets to be about midnight and someone says oh there's a late bar that's open until two you know a club and I'm thinking no I'm drunk I'm tired and I'm about to go home but then the same mental image always makes me turn around and go back into the club and stay there till everyone's gone and that mental image is me on the occasion of my ruby wedding anniversary toasting my wife with a glass of champagne as I lean against the mantelpiece of our happy hearth saying and to think I nearly didn't go to that club, darling. I was going to go home, but something, I don't know what, something made me go back into that club, and I would never have met you. Got home 3 a.m., couldn't sleep. Outside, it was one of those nights so still and so quiet, you can hear ghost trains in the high street. A deep, deep silence, as if you're in a room full of people and Michael Jackson has just offered to babysit. <laughs> Found unearthly calm that was more than I could take, so I turned on the radio. Bad, bad mistake. There came the loneliest sound on God's earth. Hello. You're listening to the late night phone in here on London Night Talk Radio. And tonight we're going to be discussing Europe. Our first caller is Reg in Ballam. Hello, Reg. Hello, Steve. <laughs> People say cars are produced more cheaply on the continent. What they don't realise is they're produced using restrictive practices. I see, Reg. From what you're saying, it sounds like it's been about five years since you last spoke to someone who knew who the hell you were. That's right, Steve. Getting back to what you were saying, I gather you're standing on torn lino in a dirty kitchen wearing semen-spattered trousers, <laughs> and somewhere there's a kidney-shaped veneer dresser. Eventually, it was bumming me out so much what this DJ was saying that I just, you know, hung up. <laughs> to take that but sometimes I say to myself no I won't feel like half a person just because I'm not going out with someone the feminists are right it's just a social construct meant to make you feel inadequate because you don't fit in I am going out tonight what though there be young couples yea and families out there am I not myself a cosmopolis that hath many voices and diverse affections in it yes box office cashier here is my money I would like to see this cinema's feature presentation how many is that for one! <laughs> I've just pulled out this crack into the lino. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting a bit tense then. When I get tense, I have to do some painting to calm down. I'll just, uh, I'll just start here on this uh, park bench. <laughs> you may notice I've gone over the edge slightly there, but that's all right, you know, because. Uh, if then you start getting hit up about those things, it defeats the object, you know. <laughs> Just do that red. <laughs> and I may decide to do the whole parasol red, you know. <laughs> or not. <laughs> As the case may be. You know. <coughs> Move to another colour, probably. You know. <laughs> Didn't have to. I could have carried on on a... <laughs> A red groove for some time there, you know. But, uh... <laughs> 